Hello, I'm Laura Cassidy from the American Chemical Society. Welcome to this media briefing from ACS Spring 2022. NASA is preparing to send humans to Mars sometime in the 2030s. The three-year mission will expose astronauts to a long period of microgravity, which will cause them to lose bone mass. But now scientists report transgenic lettuce that produces a bone stimulating hormone. Someday, astronauts could grow the lettuce in space and help guard against bone loss simply by eating a big bowl of salad. In addition, the lettuce might help stave off osteoporosis in resource limited areas here on Earth, the researchers say. We're joined today by Dr. Karen McDonald and Kevin Yates from the University of California, Davis. Thank you for joining us. So why do astronauts lose bone mass in space? In microgravity, there are a number of physiological effects on the human body, one of which is the reduction in bone mineral density. So normally in the gravity of Earth, the body constantly breaks down bone and rebuilds it to repair microfractures and to regulate the supply of calcium in the blood. But this goes out of balance in microgravity, and there is, it is, it is, Bone desorption, deconstruction is more favored in this case, resulting in a net loss of bone mineral density. And are there currently any treatments for this bone loss, which I understand is known as osteopenia? Sure. On Earth, there is an FDA approved medication called Forteo, uh, which can treat this. Um, but in, in low Earth orbit, that can also be used, provided you can constantly supply it to the astronauts. Um, some people have asked whether exercise is enough to prevent it on its own, but uh, studies so far have shown that it is not. What gave you the idea to make this bone stimulating hormone, parathyroid hormone in lettuce? Yeah, we got the idea of making uh, the PTHFC uh, therapeutic in lettuce when we heard about the challenges that astronauts faced in terms of bone density loss, as well as the challenges with uh, the stability of drugs if they're brought uh, with the, the crew. Um, we decided to use lettuce because lettuce is a plant that uh, has been grown on the International Space Station. It's also a plant that um, is very productive in terms of producing seeds. So our idea is that if we created a transgenic plant, one seed can generate, uh, if you grow that plant and harvest seeds, you can generate thousands of seeds. So you get this biological amplification of the amount of material. And so it's a very simple and uh, cost-effective way to make a therapeutic. And how did you produce the transgenic lettuce? So we, designed a synthetic gene to make PTHFC. And using a common technique, we transferred that gene into the genome of regular lettuce. And from that, we grew plants, uh, harvested seeds from those plants. And we now just um, extract the lettuce, we extract protein from the lettuce tissue and use analytical techniques to verify that they are producing PTHFC. Um, we also look at this over different generations of lettuce plants. How much lettuce would an astronaut have to eat per day to get enough PTH? Our current estimate would be that an astronaut would need to eat about eight cups of lettuce. Um, an example of which is right here. In order to get the proper dose of PTHFC, and this would be representative of the dosage that an astronaut would need each day. And have you tasted the lettuce yet yourself? That wouldn't be something I want to do at this point. Uh, there's a lot of other things that need to be tested before humans can consume the lettuce, um, such as animal studies, clinical trials, and so on. But I hope that it is every bit as delicious as regular lettuce and that it would be a good break from powdered and dehydrated food that uh, long duration space travelers might otherwise be eating most of the time. What are your next steps for this research? 
Our next steps for the research are to try to improve the amount of the uh, PTHFC that's in the lettuce so that we can reduce the quantity that would need to be eaten. Um, we also want to look at the stability of the lettuce uh, from one generation to the next over many generations to make sure it maintains its production level. We'd like to test the lettuce in space conditions. Um, and we also would like to do some animal studies to uh, test the, the safety and efficacy in animal models. And when do you think this transgenic lettuce could be grown and eaten by astronauts in space? I think that it's still a ways off. Um, certainly lettuce can be grown in space as it is now, but uh, as, as we mentioned, there's a lot of research to do on how this affects um, humans. You know, what is the correct dosage? Um, how stable is it in space? But by the time humans travel to Mars, I think, whether it's a landing or a flyby, I expect that plant-based production platforms will be in use by that time. Uh, it seems to be uh, an essential element of our time in, in, in space, our survival in space. Do you think the lettuce could also be useful here on Earth? I do think the, the lettuce could be useful here on Earth. Um, obviously, we need ways to uh, produce therapeutics in a, in a simple fashion, um, also uh, in a lower cost manner. And I think uh, the use of plants to make uh, therapeutics, such as PTHFC, would be very valuable here on Earth. What take home message would you like to leave with viewers? The take home message is that plant-based production platforms for pharmaceuticals in low resource environments such as deep space are really uh, the next step in the future of using uh, biology to meet our needs. I don't think that we'll be able to do deep space exploration uh, with, with a crew of humans without this sort of technology. Um, and it's not just the lettuce on its own, it's part of a broader way of thinking um, where we try to use every resource that we have available to us, uh, whether it's on spacecraft or the moon or Mars. Thank you, Kevin and Dr. McDonald for sharing your research with us. Be sure to check out our other media briefings for ACS Spring 2022 which will be posted throughout the meeting at acs.org slash acsspring2022 briefings.